Welcome to the Fundraising Elevator, where we're all headed up. This podcast is a production of Elevate, an online learning platform for fundraising event professionals. We're coming to you today from the studios of the AV department. Please welcome our hosts, Kristen Steele and Samantha Swain. Welcome to the Fundraising Elevator, where we're all headed up. Today, we're here to talk about sponsorship. It's a big part of fundraising events. I think it's a piece of the puzzle that oftentimes organizations are challenged with, especially new folks in the sector trying to figure out where to even start. So um, we've invited one of our favorite folks, Joe Davis, who was a speaker last year at the Elevate Conference. Mm-hmm. You brought so much like amazing wisdom into this space about some truth. Yeah, some, some truth, truth to the room as well. And that shared was good. knowledge about sponsorship, the role that that kind of partnership can have and can play. Um, and we're really excited to have you here to talk with us today about sponsorship. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. So um, I would like to, for folks who don't already know Jo, more <laughs> formally introduce her and her amazingness. Jo Davis is the Director of Nonprofit Banking and Community Development at On Point Community Credit Union, serving Oregon and Southwest Washington. Jo has held roles in retail operations, consumer lending, commercial banking relationship management, and diversity, equity, and inclusion throughout her 20 plus years in banking. In her current role, Jo oversees the nonprofit relationship strategy for the credit union and also focuses on initiatives initiatives aimed at expanding access to financial services for historically underrepresented communities. Joe serves on various local boards and steering committees, including Unite Oregon, Taste for Equity, and Women's Foundation of Oregon. Yes. So um, in addition for being here, thank you for all you do for the yeah, community. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I want to kick it open today to think about sponsorship from the other side. So our nonprofit friends likely have their definition of sponsorship Mm -hmm. (laughs) but I'm curious as somebody who does sit on the other side of the table in these partnerships how do you define sponsorship yeah sponsorships for us you know it's in the traditional sense it's our organization um putting our money where our mouth is and supporting organizations uh to help where they need the help, whether that's at an event, whether that's a programmatic support. You know, we we want to be good stewards of our profits and a way we do that is through giving back to nonprofit organizations. So um, it can also mean different things too. I think it's important to understand that a sponsorship that's meaningful for our side of the table um, includes a authentic, genuine relationship and opportunities to do more than just write the check. We want to write the checks, um, but we want to be able to tell the story and we want to be able to follow our impact and say, mm. these are the dollars um, and this is how they're showing up in the community. If you all listen to nothing uh-huh. else of this episode today, keep hitting rewind on what Joe just said. I think there's an impact that people don't understand necessarily that they can have. One, that it can be a bigger, longer partnership. And that they can even get program funding, like program sponsorship support is something that a lot of folks don't even consider when they're soliciting sponsor partners. Um, But also that they wanna track the impact, they wanna understand the difference and sort of what's happening with their dollars. I think a lot of fundraising professionals think the corporation is like the big entity with the big checkbook and it feels like nerve wracking to approach. Um, And I once heard a development professional say, no, I am an equal at the table with Mm. the person that works for the big corporation. It is their job to identify solid relationships to invest in. So we're sitting at that table as shared partners and can then start to think about how do we best serve our organization's needs. I think that kind of like levels the playing field a little bit. For sure. But for you, what's the like when someone starts to approach or solicit you about fundraising or about sponsorship dollars, what do you feel is required in a solicitation? Like what is our key elements that you want to make sure people are thinking about before they reach out? Sure. So I recommend definitely research as much as possible in terms of how the organization would like to receive the requests. Mm-hmm. So a lot of us are transitioning <laughs> to more formal processes. You know, even just a few years ago, on point um, was very casual. You know, mm-hmm. you would you would have a verbal conversation, follow up with an email and a sponsorship packet, and then we or you know, someone sitting in my position would would take that and and figure out what the decision would be. Now, because we've grown so much and we have so much um, 
so many partners reaching out, we formalize yeah. that process. So now we have an online portal where we direct our folks. And so this year, because it's a transition year for us, um, I think a lot of nonprofits just assumed that we were going to be <laughs> doing the more casual approach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so those that had a strong relationship with us um, were able to take advantage of that quicker than folks that maybe waited a couple weeks before their event. And you know, now we have a pretty firm policy on like, we, we need to see those applications at least 90 days before, for example, an event sponsorship yeah. because of our new formal process. So first and foremost, know what the process is mm-hmm. and don't take for granted that yep. it's gonna be the same year over year. Yep. And then just good old fashioned uh, relationship development, right? Like we can tell when you've cut and pasted, uh, <laughs> cut, cut, cut and pasted on an application. You know everything you can do to to draw connections between people on your team mm-hmm. and our team that comes through very very strongly in applications. And then know what is important to us, right? We yep. are an education founded organization started by school teachers. Yep. Education is a big area for us. Anytime yeah. you can tie in that topic, your application is going to rise to the top because it's a vision and value alignment for us. So know the org, you know, know the nuts and bolts of the the application Mm -hmm. process and then look for those tie-ins where it'll really really resonate for us and try to customize as possible. We want to be low barrier. You know, we don't want you to have to fill in pages and pages. But again, you can tell when it's a rinse and repeat application. So try to customize as customize it as much as possible so we can see that there's been been some thought and care put into that. In general, do you find that that process is public for most corporations or most, you know, institutions out there that are giving? Not necessarily. I think, you know, it can be, it can be inconsistent is what I've, what I've noticed, right? And we, we're, we're very open with the process, but we don't necessarily um, lead with the nuts and bolts, so to speak. You know, you, it's, you have to do a little bit of digging, you know, a couple clicks through our website uh-huh. and you're going to get exactly where you want to be. Um, but I've seen some inconsistency in terms of how transparent organizations yeah. are with that. Well, and I think what's interesting, too, is the thought that, I mean, when you're talking about sort of you have and we're going to talk about this a little bit giving priorities, but the idea that sponsorships are organizations with a mission too right right yeah. you're a, so i think sometimes <laughs> i think sponsors get looked at as the checkbook sure and there are a lot of ideas among nonprofits and our fundraising superheroes about well they should mm, right sure. they're in the community they should and that extra length of understanding how your mission yeah and your sponsor's mission come together yeah. and that foundationally is the relationship piece is something that can be transformative for both. And I think yeah. sometimes we just look at it as what's the transformational gift for the organization, totally. but miss the opportunity to present the opportunity of a transformational gift yeah. for the sponsor. And I think in that cultivation, that's where things open up. Totally. Mm-hmm. And you, you while there is this formal process and there are these things, it's how you know how to enter into that formal process. Yes. Having that information, knowing, I, I know how we all come together. I was having a conversation with Joe. Now I'm going to take, you know, whatever all those exactly. pieces are, which I think is um, a really good thing for folks to continue yeah. to write for themselves. Yeah. yeah. Um, along those lines, there is that application moment, mm-hmm. which I just want to call attention to. 90 days feels really generous. I, it does feel generous. Um, I was we're like, hounding oh, people. We're hounding people year out and umbrella sponsorships and sort of really thinking through giving people time to, to think about things yes. and have that. But what what does beyond the hitting click, mm-hmm. what does cultivation look like? Yeah, that's tricky. I think it's yeah. case by case, yeah. right? Um, on point as an organization, you know, we're really active in the community. So it's not hard to find an on point entry point. I think Mm. we deploy employees on boards, we have volunteers, we have a network of 57 branches, um, and we have a really significant retail membership base. So a connection to on point, in my opinion, is not too hard to find, but it's that people and relationship piece that's important. So, you know, as many development professionals are out there, Um, doing their thing in terms of networking and attending events, you know, introducing yourself to someone, you know, making that warm connection and establishing a rapport 
I think is a great first step for folks. Yeah. Um, and don't necessarily lead with the ask. You know, like <laughs> wait, I, that, can you say that again? Please? Yeah, you know, don't don't lead with the money, right? Yeah. Like we want we want to connect, we want to learn, um, and we get a lot of requests for funding. So yeah. to make yourself really stand out, I think the people that I can think of have kind of spontaneously um, shown up in spaces for me uh, where there was a common topic or something that we were coming together to do. Right. And then we had the conversation around, hey, oh, you're a development professional at XYZ nonprofit. Let me share with you the multiple avenues of funding that we could um, potentially partner on. And then me as an internal advocate can go back to the team that makes those decisions and say, hey, I think we really need mm. to step up for this organization because I was really impressed with um, this person that I met and I think they're doing great work. So that I think is really um, a strategic way for folks to to start building those relationships with folks. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the the decision maker. You, you know, I'm actually not the decision maker at On Point for a lot of decisions, but yeah. I have a lot of influence. Mm -hmm. And so just know that even though you're not talking to a committee person, impressions matter and when you can when you can have those casual conversations they can lead to more serious conversations about money but don't necessarily you know say hey i've got an event coming up and next week and i'd really like to see if on point could um sponsor at the ten thousand dollar level or something like <laughs> next week ten thousand dollars <laughs> don't do that so um you're very generous with your time. I think that you're very involved in the community you're talking to and connecting to and often lead with how can On Point support. Um, but On Point is deploying you in the role of building relationships for their own needs, their own business yeah. models, their own growth potential, their own sort of path that they're walking. So I'm curious about other ways to think about that partnership mm -hmm. that maybe isn't just event support and how does it look to be in a relationship that's maybe a two-way relationship? Yeah, I love that question. Um, so again, going back to impact. So I'm really lucky to work for an organization that is mission-driven. Mm. Um, credit unions and banks, we offer the same products and services. But the, the thing I love about working in the credit union industry, and I've worked in my 20-plus year career just about 50-50 in both spaces. So I feel like I can really speak to, to that from a fairly – balanced perspective mm -hmm. just from the experience level um everything we do is is mission based so we we do not um keep our profits we have to deploy those profits back to the community and so as we've evolved as an organization as we've wanted to serve more communities we're looking for those opportunities uh to support economic development whether that's yeah. at the individual level whether that's with small businesses and mid to large side businesses, but also we know that the nonprofit sector yeah. is its own business community mm -hmm. in a lot yeah. of ways, right? And it's so- a huge sector. Exactly, mm -hmm. employees, you know, you all, we, we, we see the impact that those nonprofit organizations have on our local economy. So we wanna be your banking partner, whether that's the nonprofit, whether that's, that's your employees, whether it means that we're deploying volunteers, whether we're, um, looking at your programmatic needs and saying, hey, we want to show up for this specific uh, area where you're focusing on, you know, there's there's a lot we can do beyond showing up at a gala. Yeah. Um, and that's the work that really excites me. Don't get me wrong. Love, love celebrating with community at the galas. But the more and more I do this work, the more um, powerful these programmatic grants and foundation mm -hmm. giving opportunities really um I feel those those things make a huge difference too. Yeah. And again, for us, we can tell a great story. Mm -hmm. um, we can we can say you know members because we are owned by our members. We can say members, this is how we are deploying the money that you that we have um, that we have grown our organization with. What's interesting too, in your vantage point, you have the members you're telling a story to, but you're also. And I think this is true for so many folks out there who are sitting on the sponsor side of the table. You are looking to create a workspace for employees and are investing in them in a 360 degree way where they also have personal missions yes. mm -hmm. that they want to make manifest. Yeah. And while they not may not be able to write the $10,000 check for X organization, by being able to cultivate a relationship with that organization and provide them entry points, all of a sudden, I, I, I feel like nonprofits get short-sighted in this. 
in that you are actively <laughs> investing in your employees. Yeah. Yay, happy employees. Yes. But you are also, in addition to that $10,000 check you wrote, sending them mm -hmm. volunteers that then go, this organization, this mission is amazing. And then they get to go into the cultivation yep. cycle mm -hmm. as potential donors. Like it is, it's a whole web of relationship and potential that I feel like sometimes when they just say, great, thanks for the event check. I'll talk to you in 90 days out for my next event, that they're missing the opportunity to have a warm pass off totally mm -hmm. of folks who could be really excited about what they're doing absolutely yeah you need those fans right you need those advocates and champions and that's a wonderful way to build that i also think that a lot of times when we have new folks in the sector they're they're in fact i've been in that role where i was like brand new at an organization i didn't have the relationship with any of the individuals that had sponsored in the past i was like i don't even know where to start <laughs> sure um the idea of like starting with where you bank where you do business as a nonprofit right. like nonprofits in the name I think there's an inherent problem we don't often think <laughs> of ourselves as businesses but you know we are a business we are the fifth largest sector in the country mm -hmm. that I think we should look first to where do we already have relationships that we're doing business yeah and then where is there opportunity to invite people in you know you already said board roles, volunteering, yeah. you know, those sorts of partnerships. But I think um, you are, are so profound and prolific in your support in the community that a lot of times probably you get like big solicitations from organizations you've never met or talked to. Yeah, it Three happens. days out from my event, please sponsor $10,000. <laughs> yeah. <000. laughs> yeah. But that maybe sometimes the easiest place to start is where those relationships already exist. 100%. Yeah. Well, and I think when we're talking about cultivation mm -hmm. there's me as an organization you fund cultivating you throughout the year but there's also me as a new organization that we're not in relationship right yet and understanding what I need to do to work to a place of initial support and what that can look like but also having a broader idea of what does initial support look like yeah sure I'm assuming there are instances where you don't fund but you're like how do we get some folks in the door to understand is this if this might be a good relationship moving forward 100 percent, and we try to build too we so said we may not initially start with a ten thousand dollar contribution mm, yeah. but we try to say yes whenever we can we have the resources to do that we're incredibly lucky um, that we have a very robust giving program um, but when it is a no we try to give feedback it's not just a form letter that says sorry you know try again whenever possible particularly when there is a relationship um, again i had to um unfortunately deliver a no this week because of just the tremendous amount of interest we've had. And one of the only ways we could eliminate folks and kind of get that list a little shorter was to use that threshold. Like did folks get it in, you know, in time right. and it's heartbreaking, sure. but that's an opportunity for us to educate those folks saying, Hey, for next year, make yeah. sure um, that, that the timing is right. So your chances are a lot higher, but you know, there's, just because we can't fully sponsor a table if it's a if it's an organization or a cause that really resonates we'll end up buying a couple tickets and sending mm -hmm. a couple folks anyway right so maybe it's not that full sponsorship ask but we always try whenever possible um, to deploy support and we have lots of other mechanisms too um, that we can leverage um, for certain partners we we use our PR and marketing connections and mm -hmm. connect folks you know we get seven million impressions on social media um shoot i forgot the time frame that that happens but it's it's uh the point is we have an incredible reach so yeah. even just boosting the mission and yeah. the event to try to get folks to to attend through our boosting of yeah. that are things that we try to do as well well and you have a member base that's also invested and interested so i think yes. sometimes we don't think of we think of the single person at the organization we're talking to we don't think of the broader implication we have a great story of an organization that had sponsor partnership and back in like i think this is like the height of the tw 2008 recession so this is a while ago but yeah. this big long time presenting sponsor 
had to cut their budget and couldn't mm-hmm. sponsor. And so we just all sat at a table and brainstormed. And in it, we found a million other ways that they could support that year. They gra- did all their graphic design for free with their marketing department. They did a whole like marketing outreach campaign. They did a bunch of procurement for auction packages. They served on the committee. The next year, their like support was double because they were, they had the funds back and yeah. they had now had like deeper relationships. Right. So I think thinking about how that relationship could be a partnership is um sometimes requires a little out of the box conversations it does yeah. and it's not always going to be that you're going to have the chemistry or you or you you hit it off right away so don't get discouraged <laughs> right that 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 connection yeah. isn't there you know be persistent be thoughtful and eventually that chemistry will come into the picture um so and just to backtrack a second i believe it's seven million impressions uh, a month so just to, holy um so wow, we, yeah that we is have, amazing yeah wow. it's our social media platforms are very powerful and we know that that's the way that a lot of folks are consuming information is, so yeah when we can boost we we like to do that that's well incredible. and i think that's that's the way that everybody's going they're totally. investing a lot of time and resource into getting in front of folks yeah. in those in those ways so I think um, folks need to start to see the the money is one piece right right but that there are actually a lot of other resources that when you set and get creative with a partner mm-hmm. can be an exchange of ideas and an exchange that benefits both of you yeah. and that's goal i mean if a sponsor keeps showing up and is getting nothing out of it they're not going to keep showing up that's just how that goes and i think sometimes our friends out there try to fight that truth by if i just if i just if i just and it's like when they don't see a return like that's that's business in Mm -hmm. some way right and that's that's a hard thing for folks but there are things you can do to move that in a different direction totally Well, we're going to take a short break to hear from some of our partners, but things have changed a lot in the sponsorship world in the past few few years since COVID. So when we come back, we're going to ask a little bit more about that. Sounds great. Unleash the power of events to energize your donors and amplify your mission. Join us at the Elevate Conference in 2025, where you'll learn the essential tools for planning a successful fundraising event. Book your tickets now for March 12th and 13th. This dynamic hybrid conference, hosted at Avenue in Portland, Oregon, and streamed live for our virtual audience, will equip you with practical tools, demos, and templates that you can put to work immediately. Don't miss out. Secure your spot today at Elevate 2025. Visit elevatenonprofit.com to register now. Elevate Conference 2025 is brought to you by Swim Strategies and the AV Department, powered by elevatenonprofit.com. All right. Well, before the break, we were talking about the fact that a lot has changed in the sponsorship (laughs) world. But before we dive into sort of changes that have occurred, I want to ask you about after the event. A lot of the sponsorships you all do have an event element to it. Not all, but a lot of the money you give into the community also means that you are at the event, Mm -hmm. participating in the event. And I think a lot of the nonprofit world gets to the end of their event and they're tired and exhausted and they end (laughs) there. What do you see moves the relationship needle when an organization gets to the end of their event? What kind of follow-up or additional outreach do you see is helpful? Yeah. A personal phone call goes mm-hmm. a long way. Hey now it's you may not ever or you may not get someone answering on the phone, but when you check that voicemail and you hear a personalized message thanking you for the support, it it means a lot that personal touch and we know that takes time to do that anything you can do to um, get specific about Mm. how those dollars are going to be used you know generalities are helpful but if I can walk away knowing hey that ten thousand dollar sponsorship meant xyz to our organization or it helped underwrite this portion of the the um the work that we're doing, those kind of things, the more specific, the better. Yeah. Um, and I also love what orgs are doing in terms of just those standard emails that are going out with the pictures of the events, mm-hmm. a summary. Yeah. You know, there it's a nice way to relive a, a, what's oftentimes a really fun moment. Yeah. Uh, shout outs on social media, I think, are really nice to say, hey, thanks to On Point um, for a spectacular evening. Thank you for joining us, mm-hmm. things like that. I think... 
anything you can do um, to show gratitude, I think really does make a difference. Yeah. But the more specific, the better, I would say. Do you um, seek out fulfillment packages at all? Like, do you expect organizations to say, we promised your logo in all these locations and here's a copy of all of those logo represent representations? We are very lucky that um, brand recognition is not a challenge for us. Oh, yeah. uh, so we don't do a lot of follow-up in terms of we trust the organization that the benefits that are offered to us at the time that we're entering into the agreement for the sponsorship is are going to be fulfilled but we, we we never really go back and check um and we we love having our brand out there it's a it's a part of our strategy but we don't lead with it we're really mm -hmm. lucky yep. yeah. um that again we're we're very much a mission driven um corporate philanthropy shop we're not out there for the yeah. the recognition. But on the flip side, I know that it brings a lot of value to nonprofit partners for us to be that name recognition that yeah, can boost their event, event, right? We can bring some credibility and it even sometimes helps cultivate other um, it does. donations too. So if they see, well, on points on board, maybe that's something I need to also be. Um, so we try to meet the nonprofit partner where where they're at and what's important to them. If you, if a logo is really important and, and you want to really boost the fact that OnPoint's a big supporter, then we're all for that. But it's it's a very small part of the motivation on our end. What's interesting about that as the thinking about the members of your organization, mm, yeah. though seeing your logo yeah. in alignment yeah. with missions that they're personally invested in yeah. there's a there's a full circle piece there as well that I think is is an interesting dynamic that sometimes our nonprofit friends don't think about with sponsorship yeah meaning like it's not the I'm tracking my logo was in these 50 places right but it's that in moving the brand forward yeah. and the mission of the brand forward with folks out in the community yeah. as well seeing like oh they care about this cause I do too yeah and people making some values-driven mm -hmm. choices around where they literally put money. Totally. Mm -hmm. um, but but also, you know, all the other things that we do the, uh, with sponsors that come. And, and the flip side of that can also be true when you see a brand in misalignment mm -hmm. with your, you know. 100%. So it's, I think it's an interesting space that sometimes people don't think about in sponsorship when we're talking about that that alignment piece. Yeah. It's incredibly powerful to be representing a brand like On Point. I mean, yeah. I can't tell you... It happens five or six times a week. Um, folks are saying, I'm a member. You know, <laughs> I got my first car loan with you. I was with you back when you were Portland Teachers Credit Union. So our, we have such a strong brand in the community and such great folks that serve our members that it's, it's like a dream job for me when it comes to the business development part of my role is that I have such a strong team behind me that really has made a huge impact in people's financial yeah. lives. And so to your point, you know, that people think of that when they yeah. see that logo, if they're an attending an event, you know, that oftentimes it's a very positive connection that they have with our organization. So it's just, it's, it's really awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. Well, you've been doing this work, though, for On Point for a while. And, and before that, in the banking side of things, mm -hmm. you were doing this work. So we have seen a lot of changes since mm -hmm. COVID, yeah. both because of just how people work, also how people gather, mm -hmm. and how technology has sort of progressed quickly. Yeah. How have things changed on your end? Like, what are the evolutions in sponsorship that you're seeing? Yeah. So we, again, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, you know, our organization has grown tremendously. And so with that, you know, we're very fortunate that we've also grown our dollars that we can deploy back to the community. But we reached a point where from a technical perspective, we had to onboard a very, like, sophisticated platform mm -hmm. so that we could um, create some more efficiencies and also approach things more equitably, too. Yeah. Because if you have people yeah. um, that maybe know a higher up person or an executive, you know, there those conversations happen internally. But what about the folks that don't know yeah. the people yep. that are higher up, right? Like we wanted to level the playing field by right. creating a more consistent experience and both on the folks submitting applications, but also internally. Like we have a committee of internal folks that make these decisions. It's not just the executives that mm -hmm. are deciding where um, our money goes. It's it's employees from throughout our, our organization. And so, you know, it's been a balance of scaling our giving, but also remaining true to our community and to our employees to make sure it's it's something that we're all engaging in and these are joint decisions and that we prioritize, you know, our CEOs, 
you know, perspectives and and desires to give, but also to tellers and mm -hmm. our IT folks and our administrative folks. Right? They they have important passions that they're that they're excited about, and that we want to support their their um, interests as well. I think sometimes that when you're sitting in the nonprofit seat, it can feel like a mystery. Mm -hmm. Like why why did we get funded? Why did we not get funded? Why did we get chosen? So I appreciate you demystifying a little bit the complexities on your side of trying to make sure that you're serving your member base, your employee right. base, your leadership goals, your mission that you've already identified that you want to align with. That there's a lot of layers and complexities that yeah. go into that decision. So I think that the nonprofit partner showing up at the table as a conversation versus you know yes or no check right. the box you <laughs> right. know i think is a is a makes a big difference in yeah. what is possible well and i think to um what folks i want to encourage folks to remember <laughs> is that joe you represent on point yes but joe you talk shop with the other folks mm -hmm. who represent other the other, yeah, the other right mm -hmm. so um while i might be having a relationship with you if that's not going well, right. or if that's going swimmingly, that reputation could precede me in other places. Sure. But what's also interesting is you sit in a place to be able to kind of look and speak a little bit more about some of the, the pieces of sponsorship and data showing us that sponsorship or corporate giving is on a decline. Um, is that your perspective? I am seeing that anecdotally and then just really from a very like, numbers driven perspective as well you know I sit on a couple of boards I um, do talk to other you know philanthropy for professionals and you know budgets are tightening yeah. yep. and it's really unfortunate um, because we know now more than ever those dollars are needed to yeah. to support the work that's being done right. um, to make a positive impact in our community so unfortunately I, I do see that that trend's happening and you know, there were there are other things at play too. You know, CARES Act money is is yeah. is kind of coming to its end, right? Mm -hmm. Like I think nonprofits really enjoyed, <laughs> rightfully so, yeah. um, yeah. some some funds that came from some areas that maybe historically weren't there. And so I'm seeing, you know, not just corporate funds um, dry up a little bit, but also those temporary infusions yeah. of cash, you know, are coming to an end yeah. a little bit. So there's, you know, there's a definitely a challenge out there. And then not to mention the foundation landscape too. You know, a yep. lot of foundations are reconfiguring and putting pause on their giving. And so yeah. that's just another area where that's been a big impact for some organizations. Yeah. So we know that that's, um, that's a struggle for our nonprofit partners. Do you see some of that um, slow happening in the non-dollar engagements for sponsorship partners like i'm just thinking like board engagements or volunteering mm -hmm. or those pieces do you see some of those also pulling back in terms of monetization within not necessarily not for yes. us for us it's yeah. been really consistent um and again on the funding side we're very fortunate um that we're in a growth mode right now um but i do think that organizations are trying to get creative if they yep. can't write the check you know how else can they show up support yep. in kind work you know all of those kind of things that necessarily or don't necessarily require writing a check but yeah. there's other yep. ways and i do think that volunteers and board service are an untapped resource that um on both ends i think we kind of forget that that's mm -hmm. a really powerful mechanism to build really lasting deep connections how much does that impact your giving if you have employees that are volunteering or on a board how much does that inform your decision about giving? Again, we're very fortunate that we, in most cases, are able to help support an employee if they are doing board service to help make a contribution on their behalf. Um, but it's not a given. Yep. And mm -hmm. so I would caution nonprofits to to understand <laughs> that it's, you know, it's not an automatic. Right. And right. it may not be the first year. It may be it's something that we work up to, but it's absolutely um a huge advantage, I would say, um, it, for the most part. Yeah. Again, it just all goes back goes back to that. Where are the deep connections? Where is the genuine relationship being cultivated? And you know, board services. It's hard, and mm -hmm. so we try to also equip our employees with the training and the understanding that. This isn't just a casual volunteer opportunity where maybe right. you're going to the food bank and, and giving an afternoon of your time. This right. is 
there's fiduciary responsibilities involved. You know, they're they're looking to you to be a thought partner. There's a difference between a working board and a board that's <laughs> really established. So, you know, having having had that experience, I always coach people like to ask the right questions right. and to really understand what you're involving with because the last thing we want to do is deploy employees that aren't equipped yeah. to serve on nonprofit I boards. I love that you spend that time. Not, yeah. not all organizations invest that energy. It's important. Yeah, it makes an impact. I mean, when OnPoint is on a board that we're working with, it you can tell the difference in their understanding of mission, role, you know, what they can impact, what they can't, yeah. you know, where they need to say no, where they can say yes. Like, there's a lot of clarity there that I don't think that everyone understands. We hear often folks say, my board just doesn't have the connections or the resources. And oftentimes, I think it's just that they don't know that they have, like, someone within their organization that they could go talk about, hey, I'm right. on this board. Right. Um, but I think you invest a lot of energy in making sure that your employees know that you give back and that you're a part of the community. And that there's you know opportunity for them to come and talk to you and that's yeah. appreciated in yeah. a big way yeah. yeah because it makes it that when you all show up there's just like a bigger offering to the mm. nonprofit too it shows up in different ways um i'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about a multi-pronged relationship mm. yes and what that can look like because i think this is a really interesting space for yeah. people to start to think about I'm super excited about this question. So mm -hmm. I have a I have an amazing example of an organization that we've been cultivating a relationship with. So this organization um, builds housing, mm. and so they uh, part of their mission is to make sure they're building housing for historically underrepresented communities. Mm. So we from our from our lending side of the house are going to be their commercial lender. So we're gonna mm. we're going to mm. fund those construction projects, um, deploying three to four million dollars, I think, this year. Wow. And then every year after that, I think it's estimated, you know, at least five to ten million dollars in providing them the the financial yeah. support to build this housing. That's so that's amazing. one component. Um, we're also going to be their banking partner. So on yeah. their deposit sides, their reserve funds, we're going to be able to do some really cool things to help them maximize their money. So we've got their full banking relationship. Um, we have a board member um, on their board, which is wonderful. He serves as treasurer. So providing that expertise mm -hmm. to that organization. He's been on the board since... Um, I'm not going to say the time frame, but it's been at least, you know, three or four years. So there's a solid yeah. relationship there. Um, we helped apply for a grant on behalf of this organization. It was a three to one oh, match grant through the Federal cow. Home Loan Bank of Iowa. Um, so we, we have an executive that sits on that board. And so there was an opportunity to plug in this local community partner. It was a three to one match. So we got them a $600,000 grant through oh a different <gasps> form. But my one of my favorite parts about this partnership is that, you know, remember, these are these are folks building affordable houses. Yeah our mortgage line of business stepped up and said, hey, mm. if you all want to do the so mortgage good. with us, and again, these are historically underrepresented yes. folks, we're going to do a discount on their mortgage for them, which wow. will be transformative for those yeah. home buyers to be able to keep more money in their pockets. So that's one of my favorite um, examples of a multi-prong relationship yes. where it's very reciprocal. I mean, that's a wonderful story that OnPoint can, can tell about how we're making an impact in the affordable housing space where mm. we're deploying a board member who's got great expertise, leveraging our connections to get yeah. them even more grant dollars from other f access points that they may not have thought of or been connected to. So that's kind of the gold standard. Yeah, We want to build more partnerships like that, yeah. but it's taken many years to sure, get there, yeah. right? But it's trust building. And then again, it's such a compelling opportunity for us to deploy resources mm -hmm. to that it's really a known brainer it was kind of this compounding effect too mm -hmm. like their name kept com coming up in terms of we need to do more we need to do more and now we have this amazing partnership and from a business that's perspective incredible. they're one of our customers right yeah, like they're yeah. one of our members yeah. and that's fantastic too right we can grow more the more that we can offer our products and services our, so i immediately think of our fundraisers out there that have come into an organization and maybe don't know that there is a business out there that's had that impact on their organization yeah. 10 years ago during a capital campaign or you know five years ago during a staffing transition where the corporation staff helped with the staffing transition and lent their hr expertise 
there are a ton of new tools being launched like within just the past couple mm-hmm. months we've seen that crm tools are understanding that what our partners deliver in the nonprofit sector is so much more than just the check they write and the like need to track that and to be able to share that history with the longevity of the organization so that the development director who starts in two years yeah. can understand and know the importance of that relationship and continue to cultivate that relationship yeah. versus having no idea and coming in and having to try to figure out and see only that, oh, they gave $5,000 in the gala, you know, right. they raised right. their paddle or something like that. Yeah. And that so often has been the case. but our software partners have started to really see that there are so many other things yep. to track that they're sure. building a lot of those in. Now that'll I, be helpful. I think of that story and I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope that they're tracking all right. that. I hope <laughs> that's in the notes it, somewhere. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but that brings up an interesting point. I've observed there's a lot of turnover in the there nonprofit is. space right now, right? Yeah, and that yes. lack of conti- continuity can help, can hurt yeah. the relationship mm-hmm. between a funder. So I know oh, there's yeah. a million things you're doing when you're onboarding your development professionals, but If I were you, I would prioritize keeping those relationships warm with your supporters that have been there year over year. You know, going back to the top of the conversation, understand the basic mechanics of how those requests come through because we're just as busy on our end. And while we'd love to do the outreach to every single nonprofit that we give to, the onus really is on on the nonprofit to make the ask. And so just be really careful when you have those stampy transitions that um, you're prioritizing updating us um, on the fact that there are new people that we're yep. going to be working yeah. with. We often coach our nonprofit friends that when there is someone new in the development, mm-hmm. specifically the development director role, yeah. that that's actually the opportunity. Yeah. hundred percent. So yeah. this person comes Open in <laughs> and doesn't, isn't, hasn't been in a relationship. The organization right. has, but it's a really great way to be like, Hey, Joe, I'm new. I'm super excited about this totally. mission. I know you've been supporting this work for a long time. Talk to me yeah, about what that experience has been like, you know, so that it actually gives you a place to say, it's been great. Don't mess it up. Totally. Uh-huh. <laughs> or it's not been, it used yeah. to be great. It's not been great. I'm not sure why. Right. And then we can level set and be like, yeah. how do we make it great again? Like yeah. it just is, it can be an interesting time. And I feel all too often people just go, whoop. Mm-hmm. Totally. You know, and and then it's like you don't know what happened, and then you maybe turn on social media. Turn on social media. <laughs> oh <my. laughs> yeah. You're scrolling or whatever, and you see this event happen, and you're like, "We have supported this event for five years. Yeah, why are we nothing, not there? You know, and yeah. and I think some people um, don't think through the dropped the the cost of the dropped relationship. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Even one year gap will oh, will yeah. kind of interrupt that continuity in a significant way i would say so when you were speaking at elevate for those who don't know we have a, a conference that's a like education around how to produce a good fundraising event and sponsorships such a key part we invited you and we invited megan valley from us mm-hmm. bank to come and speak and i learned something from you that day that i'm hoping you'll share because it was <laughs> actually a big aha for me that i did not understand the difference between a bank and a credit union yeah. and why folks might want to think about a credit union or how the approach might be different too in partnering with a bank or a credit union. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So for all intents and purposes, they they operate the same way in terms of products and services. Mm-hmm. So you can get your checking accounts, your credit cards, your auto loans, your mortgages from from both institutions. Where we're different is that banks have shareholders um, and Credit unions also have shareholders, but they're not a finite group of people that Mm. are making decisions. Our members are our shareholders. So every single member owns a share in the credit union. Uh And so credit unions were founded as a response to banks not serving Mm. specific sectors of the community. So, you know, we were founded by school teachers that weren't getting what they needed from their for financial mm-hmm. institutions so they pulled their money and they said we're going to start our own our own thing and so this was back in the day right it was a little bit yeah. more uh nitty gritty now we've grown there are a lot of really large financial institutions that are credit unions uh, we are the largest financial institution headquartered in oregon as a credit union mm-hmm. um so the biggest difference is the ownership structure is you know we we have an obligation to 
serve our shareholders just like banks do, but our shareholders look completely different. So yeah. what that means is, again, profits are looked at in a very different way. So mm-hmm. profits need to be deployed back to the community. So that takes the form of lower um, rates when it comes to borrowing, higher rates when you're earning money on your on your cash, um, low to no fees. You're going to find a lot lower fees in the credit union world. And then again, that community-based approach to mm looking for opportunities to serve as many people as possible, um, regardless of their backgrounds and regardless of, of their financial means. You know, we, we're we mission driven uh, to be stewards of financial education, of, of the tools that you need. It's not just the money, it's knowing how to make the money work yeah. for you. It's interesting because I think that it's so aligned. The aha I had when you were speaking was, it's so aligned to be in a mission based organization that's trying to address systemic oppressions to then be able to bank with institutions that are also addressing, (laughs) you know, those, you know, systems that haven't served. And so I think from a banking relationship, it's worth understanding the difference between a bank and a credit union and the opportunities that exist there. But then you also said that the profits must be deployed back into the community. And I think that that's a real differentiator in that because they must be deployed back into the community, coming and having a conversation with a credit union is probably a like eager, friendly conversation. So if you're new in the space of asking for corporate support, yeah. talk to your local credit union and get to understand the fact that they can be a partner to you and maybe open the door. I know you said this earlier, your name has influence that when On Point is on something, other folks... Yeah. come along. So I think that if organizations are looking at who are the credit unions in their community that they can be approaching and talking to, then how does that bring other organizations yeah. along? Yeah. Well, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to ask Joe to step into the fundraising elevator. Cool. Sounds great. <laughs> Ready to take your fundraising to the next level? Need to get unstuck in your event planning? Now's your chance to connect directly with the experts behind the Fundraising Elevator. Book a one-on-one consulting session with Sam for strategic planning and fundraising strategy, with Kristen for your program and storytelling, or Mary for your registration and data tools. They're here to provide you personalized answers to all your event questions. Don't wait. Raise more at your next fundraising event. Book your session today at elevatenonprofit.com. You can also find the link in the show notes. Welcome back. We're here with Joe Davis, On Point Community Credit Union. What should folks be thinking about when they think about their banking relationship? Yeah, that's a great question. So make sure you're not taking anything for granted, right? We know that general operating funds, unrestricted funds are super important to your organization's bottom line, right? And so a lot of times people don't necessarily think about the banking relationship and how that's either adding to that pot of money or taking away from that pot of money, right? (laughs) Yeah. And so look at your statements, check it out. What are your fees? What kind of fees are you paying? Is there an opportunity to to revisit that either with your existing opportunity or maybe see what others have uh, to offer out Mm -hmm. there? Another great... um, thing to look at is if you've got reserve accounts, make that money work for you. Mm, And so there are really cool tools out there. One that we're rolling out for nonprofit um, members. It's just for nonprofits, not going to be for for for-profit organizations where we'll be able to offer a product that offers um, a really high yield in terms of your your rate of interest. Uh, But it also is going to come with fully liquid accounts Mm -hmm. and up to $50 million in insurance coverage. That's so a amazing. lot of nonprofits, wow. uh, you know, it's their fiduciary responsibility. Yeah. It's in their investment policy yeah. that every dollar needs to be covered by deposit insurance. So what happens is organizations end up parking money in 250 <laughs> chunks right. all over right. the yeah. place. Yeah. And so we have a solution where we can be your primary institution. We can make sure that those funds are fully liquid at all times and you're covered up to $50 million. So make sure 
that if you do have those um, scenarios that you're doing your due diligence and exploring banking partners mm. that can offer you that flexibility, efficiency, and again, make your money work for you because it adds yeah. up, right? It can yeah. be the difference between a program that's continuing. It can be a difference between an FTE. You know, that interest mm -hmm. can really add up. And even though we're seeing changes in the market, um, again, I'm really fortunate to work for an organization that's prioritizing uh, giving back to our community and one of our strategic pieces of that is this nonprofit high yield savings account. So we, That's again, amazing. general operating funds, we know that those are precious, precious dollars. Yeah. So make sure you're not giving any of those away unnecessarily through fees mm -hmm. and make sure you're maximizing it through getting more interest. I'm hearing from you the need for nonprofits to think of themselves as businesses. <laughs> yes. And understand, similar to how, you know, individuals put together their own financial plan or yeah. businesses put together their budget and their financial plan for the year. I think in the nonprofit sector, the word itself, I think, teaches us to mm -hmm. sort of burn in hand and be in this like starvation mentality. Yeah. But also, I think that there's a lot of things historically in the sector that have taught us dollar in, dollar out that, you know, if you bring in a donation of a dollar, that 90 cents of that has to go directly to the impact. And we're not thinking about how to restructure so that that, that dollar is actually earning us $2 totally. so that we can mm -hmm. yield and support to the community. Yeah. So that need to make that shift and that evolution is something that we've been seeing a lot of. Yeah. And we encourage nonprofits to keep looking up from the nonprofit moniker <laughs> and yeah. say, but how do you start to yield a profit and make your money work for you? Exactly. And I think that's um, really sound advice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not spending it on things. Right. So when you're thinking about fees or yeah. conversely, when you're thinking about, I think sometimes people don't understand what a high yield interest rate actually looks on money that's just sitting there. I mean, I think we've all been sort of, we get out of that, right? Yeah. We get away from that yeah. and we're just, so when it, when it is working for you, that's a totally yeah. different yeah. And it's a great, piece. again, story for us to tell. So if you do just some of the quick math based on the current interest rate that we're paying, which is 4.75, um, for every $25 million that we gather in nonprofit deposits, mm -hmm. we're deploying about $1.2 million <laughs> back into the community. Yes. So it's a really powerful, yeah. again, great. another yeah. story point that we can say is like yeah. we are, you know, again, deploying those profits back to the community. And so... Take advantage of those. Yeah. It doesn't have to be with on point. We would love it if it was with on point. Sure. But every dollar matters. So make yeah. sure that you're being good stewards. Yeah. Let's jump in the fundraising. Let's moment. do it. Let's Where do we're it. all headed up. What is a, a tip or a piece of sage advice you would have for our fundraising superstars out there that can help them continue going up? Yeah. You know, don't forget everything is based in authentic connections, right? You know, we all get distracted by technology, our to-do lists, but really that personal connection yeah. goes a long way. And be thoughtful and intentional about your asks, right? Like mm -hmm. I said, research what those preferred methods are. It may be that the sponsorship packet isn't going to be your entry point into financial um, support with the organization. Right. There could be a really compelling reason why OnPoint would want to support you through a programmatic grant. Mm. Um, we, again, were founded by educators. We have funds specifically set up to support the education community. And so a good example I like to use is um, if you're partnering with a school um, and, and uh, providing a service or a, a program the school could actually apply for funding <laughs> through On Point. And it's this beautiful trifecta of a partnership, right? We would deploy the funds to support the programming that the nonprofit's offering to the school. And again, we get to stay really true to our roots yeah. and tell this beautiful story of where it's not just money going directly to the school. We're also supporting a nonprofit team that is providing expertise and services that On Point can't. So, be creative, be strategic, and be thoughtful. Um, that's that's what I would say. Well, and it. that's also, in addition to that being a great story, you and your organization yeah. can tell, that's a really fantastic story for yeah. the nonprofit totally. to be able to tell as well in terms of amplifying impact and creating larger connections. And yeah. like, ah, just win-win. Win-win. Mm -hmm. Well, it. for all of our listeners that are in the region, so... Um, on Point is in Oregon and Southwest Washington. How do people find out more about On Point? You're giving priorities banking with you all. Yeah. 
yeah so i love to connect with folks so feel free to uh, find me on linkedin i love to connect with others um and then our wop well excuse me wop site our website (laughs) on pointcu.com is a great place to start um our corporate giving page is very easy to find. Um, you know, our, our top little ribbon there has community, click through community, and you can read all about our various um, paths to financial support with us and get to know us, right? We have 57 branches. Go in and say hi. Chances are a lot of listeners already have a banking relationship with us. We know that the nonprofit sector is full of amazing employees that, that bank with us. And so we want to connect in any way possible. Amazing. We appreciate all that you do in the community, all the organizations that you support. And for those who aren't in the Oregon and Southwest Washington area, look into your your credit unions and your community. I think that there's a wealth of resource that can come from credit union partnership. And I think that it's a, a lesson that I learned from you about the value of being able to serve the communities that you're a part of. So um, thank you for being here. We appreciate you. Yes. And for our listeners, we hope that you'll tune in next week. We're going to be talking to Ria Wong, host of the nonprofit Lowdown, about making better asks and how to spend more time effectively in the area of the work that will move your mission forward. So be sure to tune in. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It was a pleasure. The Fundraising Elevator is produced in partnership with Swaim Strategies at the studios of the AV Department. The program is produced and directed by Steve Osborne, with audio engineering and original music by Dwayne Anderson, Heidi Christensen, and Adam Breeden. Video production by Shannon Doran. Graphic design by Pendulum Creative Group. Marketing by Lisa Aragon. Support from Mary Elizabeth, Todd Campbell, John Lyles, and Andy Dowsett. And voiceover by Josh Boykin. y'all it's Kristen. before we leave i want to ask for your help to make the podcast grow if you enjoyed what you heard today please like follow and subscribe to the fundraising elevator and if you're getting a lot out of the show share it with a friend leave us a review these things help make sure that the podcast continues heading up thanks so much for being here and tuning in event planners are discovering avenue the Pacific Northwest's new AV Forward event venue, intentionally designed with nonprofit fundraising events in mind. From the 93-foot video production wall to the highest quality sound and lighting, Premier AV features are included in every venue rental. You'll find the space and audiovisual enhancements to create your unique and memorable event. Visit avenueportland.com to schedule your personal tour. ready to engage supporters and grow your base with your own podcast? Then let us introduce you to our partners at the AV Department in Portland, Oregon. In addition to delivering exceptional live event audiovisual production and videography, they also have a top-tier production studio and an expert team ready to take your content ideas to the next level. Contact the AV Department to schedule a consultation and start bringing your podcast vision to life. 